this is Eve Kristoff, your love life coach. And tonight I want to speak to you about um, the way Buddhism would have been different if Buddha had gone home to his wife and children after he sought enlightenment under his Bodhi tree. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Well, you know, First, I want to say I am so thankful for Buddhism and all of the beautiful, peaceful monks who have come to our area with their mandala paintings, their rituals, their drumming and chanting. We need to protect these people and make sure that we honor this ancient tradition that has given the world so much. But I am not um, singling out just Buddhism. I'm actually taking a tour of the world, one by one, world religions, and just um, really looking at what would they be like if they had more of a feminine perspective. Because to me, um, none of these world religions, even with their beautiful teachings and very, very wise teachers, um, they're not complete without the perspective of the feminine. So here goes a little story for you that I made up myself. <laughs> Buddha is under his tree when he suddenly has pangs of nostalgia, longing, and love for his family. He wakes up from a deep meditation and decides he will sneak over to the palace and just see how the wife and kids are doing. But when he gets there, even in his disguise, he's immediately recognized and ushered into the queen's chambers. There he finds a new woman. He almost doesn't recognize her. He's like, wow, you look different. I, I, I was just worried. I know I've been gone a long time. I just wanted to make sure you're okay now that I'm busy, you know, in this whole new path about being a guru and such. She says, you know what? Thank you for the favor because since you've been gone, I have been leading the kingdom and it's a queendom now. And um, I could never do that when you were around. You were... Um, you didn't have faith in me uh, as being equal to you, but I had to take over when you left, and I, <laughs> okay, bear with me, and so I have um, revamped the whole kingdom. Um, now everybody has more time in the day, they work less, taxes are lower, um, it's more about education and the children, and we are all... Um, actually meditating every morning because of you. What, says Buddha, because of me? I thought you would be mad at me that I left. Oh, well, we were very sad, she said. We've missed you terribly. We would like you to come back if you would. Someday, please do. But um, we snuck over and we watched you with your monks and we saw the meditation you were teaching. I came in disguise and I have been following your practices, she says. My beloved husband, I am so thankful for what you've taught me. I am meditating every day, and I am finding bliss within myself. Oh, no, 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 that's probably not possible, says Buddha. You're a woman. Well, she says, why don't you try coming home and helping me with some of these chores, running the kingdom and taking care of the kids, so that I can have more time to put into the enlightenment and leave her myself. Oh no, says Buddha, I need all the time, all my time for meditation. I couldn't possibly be dealing with worldly things, because to become enlightened you must sit under the tree all the time. And that's just not going to work for me. Well, says his wife, Maybe what you're doing is narcissism and a little bit selfish because without the feminine raising the kids at home, the world will go away. They will, the human race will go extinct. Please, she says, be fair. Allow me to have some time under the tree. 
Buddha is shocked by her words. But truthfully, it's so good to see her face. He figures he'll put up with her for a little bit longer and just stay in the palace to see how the kids are doing. <laughs> well, sure enough, it turns out the kids are one step ahead of their parents. They have already incorporated meditation and tantra. They figured out that you can have sex and love and family and work and meditation and enlightenment, feminine and masculine balance. And all the girls now are going to school, and all the girls now are included in the Buddhist temples. And this peaceful land starts to have quite a reputation all over the world. Buddha himself tries to leave and go back to his tree alone, but in his deepest meditation, he sees the goddess. She appears to him as his wife. <laughs> and she says to him, Life is blissful suffering. <laughs> yeah! Let's embrace the feminine into all these wise religions. We don't have to throw them out, but we do need them to grow and expand. Maybe that's partly why people are, there's a diaspora going on where um, people are being sent all over the world for terrible atrocities. Um, but there's this beautiful gift in it. We are receiving Buddhism in a whole new way as these monks come to our villages. And maybe they too can be affected by the feminist movement of the world, the goddess movement that says we can all, we can all have pleasure, sexuality, and enlightenment. Yay! Love life, my darling. If you want a love life coaching session, you can contact me. Listen to my music. It will bring you a lot of bliss tonight. Share the Democratic Convention. It's amazing. I've been watching it. There are so many great speakers. Talk about embracing the feminine. Hillary Clinton is a goddess to me. And all of these LGBT speakers are so outspoken, so passionate. This is truly a new day and age, and we are ready for it, aren't we? Yes, we are!